it is a lot of fun. It is a shame that we haven't got much sea to contend with today. This is the Sargo 45 Explorer and judging by the response to the tour of this boat that we shot at Dusseldorf there were a fair few of you very keen to find out what this 1 million euro flagship of the Sargo range is like to drive. So in this video I'm going to do exactly that and at the end we'll give it a full tour as well. Let's get going. I'm Jack Haynes, welcome to Yacht Buyer. The boat is available with stern drives or IPS. The majority have had IPS and this one's no different. So it's IPS 650, 480 horsepower on each side. And of course that means you get joystick control, but this boat has also got the assisted docking system. And what that does is combines the IPS pods with a hydraulic thruster. So you get even better control of the bow and that really comes into effect in, in tough conditions. So when it doesn't need to, it will just use the pods uh, to vector as it would normally. But if there's a lot of wind or tide affecting the state of the bow, then it'll bring in the, the bow thrusters it needs to. And you also get a sort of enhanced version of Volvo's DPS dynamic positioning system, where again, I've just hit it now, it's holding the boat in place but it also brings in the bow thruster to help keep you on the straight and narrow. And it also means when you move sideways, you move truly sideways. So the boat moves perfectly sideways without the, the stern moving ahead of the bow. The other thing it does is if you're in joystick mode, if you let the joystick go, it immediately activates and starts holding the boat in place. So if you're coming to a marina, you just need a break to, to take a breath and assess the situation. You can let go of the joystick and you know the boat is automatically holding itself in place and you're not drifting anywhere. So that's all the slow speed stuff. It's incredibly easy to control at slow speed and it makes single handed driving very easy indeed. You also got things like having the steering wheel knob so you can swing the pods manually from side to side very easily. Obviously it's the same with the stern drives. But let's get it up to speed because that is where we really want to be. So this has got the Humphrey Volvo interceptor trim system, trim blades. I've got that on trim assist so that is now just working away to keep the boat at the ideal trim for the conditions. The conditions are incredibly kind today. It's a little too calm for a boat like this, but we'll get her up to cruising speed. Now talking of cruising speed, actually the fuel economy doesn't really waver between 15 knots and 30 knots. You're looking at sort of between four and four and a half liters per nautical mile, whatever you do. And even at 15 knots, if you've got the blades right down you're just on the plane so you can cover some really serious distance but you really don't affect your range all that much if you're going between 15 and 30 knots this boat's got the optional 2000 litre fuel capacity which means you're getting nearly 450 nautical miles at 25 knots That's a really good decent fast cruising range but it's not just all about going in a straight line comfortably, although that is very easy to do. The handling is just divine. And it's made so easy by this driving position. It's really easy to swing the boat from side to side. It leans over very pleasantly, probably not quite as hard as it does with the stern drives. Stern drives, you're going to get very similar performance. 35, 36 knots flat out, similar cruising speed, ever so slightly more economical than the IPS boat. But we're sat here now at 25 knots and, and this, this is lovely. This is really peak cruising speed. And, and the driving position is, is fabulous. Obviously I've chosen to stand here, but not only do you have adjustable wheel, but if I want to sit back, you can fully adjust the entire helm station. Sit back, slide the seat forward. And that is a, a really wonderful, comfortable, relaxed, driving position. It is a lot of fun. It is a shame that we haven't got much sea to contend with today, but it certainly laps up these lovely conditions. These are an option to have the larger Garmin 22 inch MFDs. Most people have chosen them. I can see why they're absolutely superb. And you've got your twin Volvo Penta displays up there as well. So what's nice is we've got double chart here so we can really see our surroundings. We're in the archipelago so there are quite a few hazards. 
but you've always got your engine information on display. It's like the days of having analog dials up there. You've still got all, all of that really easy to see, but fantastic large charting software on display. So you're really abreast of everything that's going on around you. The dash layout is very simple. It's quite plain, but it's practical and effective like this boat. It just, it just works. Everything on this boat just works. And uh, the helm is a, a very good example of that. It's, <laughs> it's beautifully balanced, it really is. And I've got the trim assist on. You can play with the blades independently if you want, but you know, just let trim assist get on with it. And then you can just enjoy the handling and the cruising performance. Let's give her a few beans. Really immense levels of grip. You really struggle to destabilize it as well. It's incredibly sure footed and secure and quiet as well. Very, very quiet. Part of that's down to the IPS, but they've also worked very hard to insulate the engine room and make it that comfortable cruising boat. And it, it absolutely is. Yeah, this is 30 knots now, but you've still got over 300 nautical miles of range. I think that's the thing that stands out for me, the fast efficiency. You can do serious miles on this boat at high speeds, and it's the fact that whatever you adjust the cruising speed to, you don't have to worry too much about the range because it's so efficient across a wide range of speeds. Two other things I like about this helm station. One is the all-round view is absolutely superb. Obviously, you've got a wonderful view forward through this three-piece windscreen, but all around you, it's very, very easy to, to check your surroundings. If you do a hard turn, you can see very easy out the back. The other thing is ventilation side doors on both sides that can be locked ajar so you can get a little bit of ventilation obviously you can open them right up and you've also got the sunroof so depending on the conditions you can really easily ventilate this interior which does get quite warm because there's a lot of glass very easily so again really out of that functionality and being able to you know, make the boat attuned to whatever the conditions are and that's the driving experience then i think we should pull over probably somewhere typically picturesque and have a closer look at the decks and interior start the tour make sure you subscribe to the yacht buyer channel really easy to do hit subscribe and then hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we upload a new video right on with the tour we're back at base so let's have a closer look this really is a feast of practical detailing and it starts right back here where you can have a high low bathing platform obviously that has its advantages but if you don't have that you have this truly gigantic storage void which is dedicated for fenders like this which are such a pain to store on boats of this size so to have somewhere where you can chuck them know they're away is very very useful i should also point out if you do want the high low bathing platform you can only have that with the ips boat for obvious reasons the stern drive boat the legs are underneath so it can't go down but i think that's probably a pretty good solution that it's just so easy to get in and out of it and the practical stuff continues simple things like these racks here that hold the fenders very neatly out the way you know exactly where they are it's obviously very nicely arranged this is the explorer version one of the key parts of that spec is the darker color but also you get the powder coated railings and i thought they might get hot it's been a very hot sunny day today but they really aren't too bad at all to touch and they do look very smart it has to be said um, single access here through the transom gate you can see this really big thick rubbing shake all the way around the boat so you know that if the fenders don't quite make it you've got some protection when you're coming alongside over on this side this is actually fitted out as a cooler which we found really useful today for getting out waters out here in the cockpit you know very close to where everybody's going to sit in makes perfect sense to have that there very heavy lid that slams shut quite hard so you need to watch your fingers a bit of storage back here there is storage just absolutely everywhere there's even little storage lockers on either side just for the ropes this is also where you have the fuel fillers as well easy access but again covered up when you're not using them more storage this is going to be a theme storage i missed this in Dusseldorf and everyone complained so you have some nice storage down there again i mean it's really fender shaped there's lots of space for fenders off but again just another useful and again easily accessed storage locker and talking of that if you don't want to have your chairs out, you want them folded away for when you're moving along, you have the perfect place to put them right here. It's big, easy to open on a gas strut, 
quite shallow but tall locker. There's cushions in there, there's a toolbox, the chairs fit in there perfectly, there's stowage for the table leg. Again, <laughs> incredibly easy to access and, and so thoroughly well thought out. We'll go through engine room access at the end of the tour because it's very impressive, but we'll, we'll do that at the end. Let's carry on round the side decks. They're symmetrical, the same both sides. Very easy to navigate your way forward on this boat. Lovely high railings. There's railings up top as well. They're so high, they're quite hard to grab, but it's nice to have them up there. And they've actually attached some roof racks to these so you can carry your stand-up paddle boards, that sort of thing, up on the roof, above the sunroof. There's a side gate here. This is a really important feature. It's all well and good having the side door, but if you're truly gonna use this boat easily on your own, you need to be able to get off of here and then get off to the pontoon all in one movement. And this allows you to do that. So I really like to see that, it's a great feature. Moving forward, you get the height of the coach roof here. It comes up to my hip level. And again, that puts you right between some railings. The security of movement around the boat is absolutely outstanding. Designed to be used in all weathers, you know, harsh conditions so you need to feel safe when you're moving around and you most certainly do quite simple cushion arrangement here on the fore deck obviously there's an infill for this section but we've got it off at the moment so there's more light going down into the owner's cabin forward and this has been a favorite spot today for a lot of people when you're in the speed limited areas around the archipelago you just find yourself sort of sitting here in the breeze having a chat it's very sociable sitting opposite people obviously the table is a nice addition that has a dedicated stowage area obviously down here under the floor that's also a nice big locker in its own right and gives you access to the anchor chain but yeah now in the evening temperature dropped a bit this is a really nice place to be and this is typical scandinavian design you have the single rung ladder over the bow you know you nose into islands you nose into berths here a lot of the time so you have that step off this one's a bit short though it's a bit of a struggle to get on because it has a high bow this boat so they do have a telescopic version which i would definitely opt for if you're going to be using that a lot underneath lined out storage it's not the anchor lock, the chain locker because that's underneath here that is just storage lines whatever you want really but storage 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 it is absolutely everywhere there's even some down here really for lines and that's quite nice because it's got a little cutout here so you can tie the lines off up to the cleat and then you can feed them into the bin so the tails are all neatly tied away. Impressive stuff. Let's carry on with the interior. Let's head inside then. Through the door, pins itself open just here. There's a little bit of a step up into the wheelhouse and then you have this push out window that good for ventilation, connects this area very nicely to the cockpit and the practical stuff continues. Things like just having a big shelf up here where you can put in the winter hats, gloves, straight above your head when you come in, all very easy. Same as a shallow shoe locker underneath the floor here. In fact, out in the cockpit and just here by the helm seat, they've lifted up the lockers so that you have space just to kick your shoes under when you take them off. There's little things that Sargo think of. Absolutely brilliant. Storage here for Fowleys. Again, right by the door, just where you want to put your big coats in there and they're safe and out the way. And then you have very simple switching here for things like the engine room hatch, the table, which lifts up and down, and lighting, deck wash, that sort of thing. This boat is finished in Alpi. It's quite a bit brighter than the boat we toured at Dusseldorf. I don't think it feels quite as warm, but it certainly brightens up what is already a very bright interior. You can have three windows above here. This one's got the single with the blind that pulls across because this has got solar panels, optional extra, obviously helps to feed the domestic batteries when the conditions of peak like this, they're an option, as I said. If not, you just get a little bit more glass above your head. But natural light is not an issue inside here. This is obviously your main internal seating area, directly opposite the galley. And with that adjustable table, you can have this at the same level as the counter, which is really nice. It makes moving, especially heavy things, over to the table very easy. Yes, everybody has to shuffle in and out, but it's a big, comfortable space, this. And I love these little armrests that are built in on both ends so the person here on the outside can can lean in comfort onto the galley itself it's all hidden away very nicely when it's not in use and then these heavy corian lids pop up and you've got gas cooking on this boat with a double sink we've got a nice big fridge here dishwasher on the way in and actually this is a surprisingly good size i've tested you know 50 foot flybridge boats with smaller dishwashers than that that is genuinely going to be useful when you've got a boat full Lots of storage underneath here, the bins down here, and then very nice dedicated spots for all the crockery here. All of these are on soft close mechanisms. Oh, it's just 
just also satisfying. Deep storage down here. And then over here, every little bit of area is very well used. This is quite a deep locker, so this is where you've got space for your wine bottles. Underneath here, inverted, the wine glasses have you know, bespoke fiddled areas, so they're held really, really securely. They're not gonna rattle and clink. The hinges are quite strong throughout the boat. You definitely know when things are shut. We've talked about the helm station out at sea. It's, it's perfect. There's no other way to put it. It is the perfect driving position now I said that the boat is around 800,000 euros base with IPS. This one has got a pretty heavy spec, pretty much everything apart from the optional Seakeeper. So it's just over a million euros, excluding VAT to this spec. But that includes things like these fab 22 inch Garmin MFDs, which I talked about on the water, but they really do transform the driving experience. They are just superb. And then over here, this is where your guests are gonna travel or probably most want to travel when you're at speed. Three nice comfortable seats with their built-in armrests, much like the dinette. And then each one has an individual footrest. So again, you can adopt a really comfortable position when you're covering yards in you know, tough conditions. This is a great place to be. You set up high, you're alongside the skipper, your view forward is excellent. You've got plenty to grab onto. You can really settle in there and enjoy the ride. And underneath this one here on the port side, up it pops, and we have superb access down to the midship's cabin. It goes down a long way, deep, deep, deep onto the lower deck, but actually it's pretty easy to get down here. Headroom, as you can see, perfectly serviceable, and into what is a really large bathroom. Again, headroom levels, impressive. Shower fits here, but obviously goes up here when you want to use it. There's a curtain here to stop water going up against the door because you've got your toilet in here as well yeah it's a it's a pretty decent space as is the cabin itself which has got a pocket door so it doesn't gobble up too much room and okay headroom where you're going to be lying down is pretty restricted but these berths nice size they're also on a manual runner everything is manual on this boat you don't push a button for anything to move apart from maybe the sunroof everything else is just manual, cannot go wrong, and I really like that about it. So these slide manually. You've got a deceptively large cupboard there. It looks like a small door, but it's also very deep. So as well as hanging storage, you can put bags in the bottom of that, swallow all your bags. Radiators throughout, these are electric. Not really designed for when you're on board, they're designed for when you're off the boat and you want to keep you know, keep it temperate. Uh, but you know, they're all centrally linked, very, very good. You've got diesel heating for when you want to actually heat the boat when you're on board but yeah this is your the main guest cabin it's nice and private from the other two which we're gonna have a look at now before we head down there though a couple of things to point out first of all i mentioned about manual mechanisms the tv another perfect example no electric motor wearing away or potentially sticking this just swings down from the ceiling gas ram there's more gas rams on this boat than any other boat i've ever tested and back up she goes it's quite heavy a bit awkward but again Fail safe. I got a lot of stick after the YouTube tour from Dusseldorf for missing the washing machine. I am hereby not missing the washing machine. It is under here. I couldn't believe there was one on board, but under these rugs, there it is, the washing machine. Happy YouTube. They really have thought of everything. Onwards. And it won't surprise you that the first thing I mentioned down here in the Ford accommodation is storage. Nice deep shelves here, more hanging storage, always very helpful. And even this space here has got a nice tall fiddle on it so you can put things on there and know they're not going to slide away. Now you can have two or three cabins on the 45. The majority have had the three cabin layout. If you have the two cabin layout, you lose this cabin here, you get a bigger bathroom and a bigger owner's cabin. But this is another Really good guest cabin. Okay, the person on the outside has to clamber over the person on the inside to get in and out in the middle of the night, but the bed itself is a good size. Again, there's plenty of place to chuck kit, clothes, and headroom when you're standing is absolutely superb. Really good space. It's not connected directly to this bathroom. This is the day head. This is the, the one that guests will use during the day. It's got a separate shower cubicle. It's bigger than the one in there. And it is en suite to the owner's cabin so it's nice that it's a little bit larger 
If you're not gonna have lots and lots of guests on board regularly, then you may want the two cabin layout because it gives you a bit more space in here and it does give you that bigger bathroom. But this is still very nice space. Plenty of natural light. Talks about having the cushions off on the coach roof. So you get loads coming down here. This opens up as an escape hatch and also for some ventilation. You've got opening ports both sides as well so you can get some breeze running through there. I would like to see some repeaters by the top of the bed for the main cabin lighting. You've got those reading lights, but if you forget to turn the lights off, you have to climb all the way out of bed and turn it off here. But they are on dimmers, so you can set the tone a little bit. Storage on either side is really good. And just, again, the simple things like having hooks, really useful for hanging towels, things like that. You know, there's no harm having them there, and it's just helpful to have those little bit of additional thoughtful touches. And to finish off, let's, of course, look at some more storage, because under the bed, we have a huge bit of storage. Shoes, bags, everything can go in there. It is one of the most practical boats I've tested in a very long time. And talking about practicality, let's go and have a look at that engine room. There are two parts to the engine room access on this boat. First of all, forward here, you have this quick inspection hatch. This is just to pop your head down and make sure everything's as it should be. And, you know, for sort of sight, You've got everything where you want it to be really because you can see the raw water strains really easily. You've got two sets of fuel filters per tank and you can see by eye the fuel because they've got glass bowls. So again, just quick check, make sure the fuel's okay. All very easy to do from up here. But if you want proper access, put this back down again, slow on it. Then the entire lot lifts up at the touch of a button. And what I like is, because it opens this way, you can still get on and off with the engine hatch up. If it opened back towards the transom, then obviously you're blocking your way onto the boat. Then you have to move the table again. Couldn't be easier, all very clever. And I distinctly remember the boat at Dusseldorf having a raised step to help you in here, but this one doesn't seem to have. So at the moment, you sort of have to clamber down onto what are quite hot engines and then down into the middle, but it's an very, very impressive space. It is absolutely immaculate. Lined out both sides with tread plate. You've got you know, shelves as well, so you can put boxes down there for storage. It's even got those radiators that we saw in the cabins in there for in the winter when you want to keep the engine room temperate. You've got the radiators built in. No faffing around with your own storage heaters. It's all there for you. You can see the generator down there, all incredibly neat, very easy to get to. Plenty of space down here if you do have the Sea Keeper. Yeah, as an owner run boat, which this is, it couldn't be easier to look after this engine room, apart from maybe the access. A million euros for a boat of this size is undoubtedly a lot of money, but I haven't tested many boats that feel more capable than this and capable in any weather, any conditions, any time of year, you get bang for your buck because you can use this boat whenever you want. The only sad thing about today's test is that the sea state was just too easy. 30 knots, it is just so smooth and comfortable. What I'd really like to feel is how it gets on in a big sea, but maybe we'll get an opportunity to do that another time. For now though, it's the biggest boat in the Sargo range you get all the benefits of the accommodation at this size, this type of boat, the smaller ones get criticized for the size of accommodation, not on this one. It really does feel like the full package. Thank you very much for watching that review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to watch a tour of one of this boat's big rivals, the Botnia Targa 46, then click up here. If you don't watch that tour I did of this boat at Dusseldorf, click down here. And if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, please click up here. Thanks for watching.